Hello, everyone, and welcome to our indoor air quality video. This is the first time I'm recording a video, and I'm doing it from my home office since we've all been asked to hunker down to prevent the spread of coronavirus. So this has been makes this a perfect time to really talk about indoor air quality. Spending more time indoors at home, uh, we all have to be more aware of the quality of the air in our homes. I want to discuss indoor air quality as it pertains to COVID-19, but also how we can continue to promote better indoor air quality after the coronavirus has passed. I've noted that the EPA states that indoor air quality is often three to five times more polluted than outdoor air. So spending more time indoors creates longer exposure to contaminated air. While I want to discuss indoor air quality in relation to COVID-19, I also want to be realistic about whether a product or device can kill viruses at all and whether it has the ability to stop COVID-19 spread. While no company has prohibited their equipment against COVID-19 specifically, which makes sense, I don't think the Centers for Disease Control is going to hand out a uh, pathogen like COVID-19 just to have people judge equipment. But anyway, uh, also, we want this video to cover indoor air quality as it applies to HVAC systems. And remember that those that are the considered the miracle cures that have been advertised, uh, make sure that they've been tested in realistic environments. And that's also to say, if tests of this equipment was done in something unrealistic, you know, I'm sure that COVID-19 can be killed by almost any good UV light if it's just in a box. But we have to remember that we're going to apply this equipment into HVAC systems. Again, we have to look at one more thing before we look at the actual equipment, but that is there's no size fits all solution to indoor air quality. I'm presenting uh, a number of different methods and each method covers a specific problem related to indoor air quality. Now they do overlap, but as we look at indoor air quality practices in the face of COVID-19, we're going to keep in mind that uh, we should continue to make indoor air quality improvement part of our business. Uh, and that means from the state of APR supply, as well as for you and, and your customers, far beyond the COVID-19 crisis. Indoor air quality strategies that we're going to discuss will allow homeowners to be confident that their system is capable of removing those indoor air pollutants from their HVAC, the HVAC system stream. Let's look at some of the steps. So the first one in any way to control air, to control the source of contaminants. Now, again, as we look at COVID-19, there's really no way for us to truly control the spread of the contaminant. We don't, we can't see it, we can't follow it. How do we control the source? And that that's really, a standpoint of public health. But source control, as we look at indoor air quality far beyond COVID-19, I don't know that homeowners are willing to even consider many of the things. For instance, you can't hardly tell a pet owner that the best way to keep pet dander out is to get rid of the pet. And we don't just go in and say, well, stop smoking in the house, don't cook in the house. In fact, you probably shouldn't even use a bathroom that's in the house. You can see that for many people, for most people, source control is not an option. So that we should remember that as part of this, we, we want to at least look for sources of contaminants to be removed. Look for, for mold. Look for heavy dust accumulations. Look for open containers or, or things that are going to cause volatile organic compounds to be in, come into the house which includes new building materials. Remember that any, as we look at maintenance also, that any good HVA system maintenance requires cleaning. So we wanna look closely as we do that maintenance for dust, mold, and other contaminants in and around the air handler. And while cleaning and sanitizing the air handler does not stop 
or prevent any virus transmission, it's really necessary for proper system operation. So as we go on, let's look at filtration. So filters, filtration was the first thing that ever would, could be considered indoor air quality. It was added, you know, it was added to systems as soon as systems were equipped with blowers. And that first device, it, it was not considered to be an indoor air quality device. Remember, filters originally were intended to protect the equipment, not to, to protect the homeowner. They've evolved into a great way to protect the indoor air, protect our, our homeowner, and to protect the home's indoor air quality. Now, as we look at this in directly in relation to the COVID-19, the only thing that will truly stop all of the virus is a true HEPA filter. Now, HEPA stands for high efficiency particulate arrester. These filters will remove viruses. HEPA is defined as being able to remove 99.97% of particles down to 0 0.03 microns. These particles are smaller than the particles in smoke and dust. So while no natural filter will re remove 100% of virus, it's still the best First step. And we have to then look at, since we're not going to be able to do HEPA, we have to look at MERV. And MERV stands for Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value. <clears throat> so how does MERV relate to HEPA? The MERV rating for, is rated from 1 to 20. And the filters that are 1 to 4 are the traditional old fiberglass filter, you know, the ones that will stop a, a small car. Well, MERV, or well, I'm sorry, well, HEPA filters, actually, if they were rated in the MERV rating, would be rated in the 17 to 20 range. MERV 13 filters are the first ones that will actually capture any significant amount of viruses. So keep that in mind. The high efficiency filters that we, APR Supply, has available are from Honeywell and April Air, and they're, they're a great first step. The fibers in those filters, the, the uh, fibers in the actual media air cleaner filters become statically charged in the airflow, and they tend to attract particles that are even smaller than pieces between the filters. Remember then, as the reason we can't use a HEPA filter in a typical residential system, as those filters become more effective at removing all the contaminants, they become more restricted to the airflow. And this is, you know, it's designed re restrictiveness. It's, it's necessary to be contributing to excellent indoor air quality. But in the face of the, the HVAC system, it becomes a, a detriment. Most of these popular filters, and, you know, we look at the hardware store varieties that can drop air pressure or, or can cause a pressure drop of 0.3 inches or more. We have to consider that a well-designed HVAC duct system should be limited to a maximum total external of 0.5 inches. A filter that causes a pressure drop of more than half of the available static pressure will likely cause inadequate system air. Low airflow will cause frozen coils in AC mode, high temperature faults and heating. We can't just throw filters at a problem to fix the problem. We have to design that filter system to still allow good filtration and good airflow. The best advice I can give you here is to always oversize the air filter. The larger the filter, a larger filter causes lower velocity through the filter and thus lower static pressure drop. My plan is to post another video specifically about filter size within the next week. So stay tuned, look for another video. One more quick thought about filters. If you're using good filters that trap at least some viruses along with mold and bacteria, make sure that you're protecting yourself while you while you do what seems to be the very simplest task of changing filters. Everything you've trapped from that home in the last month 
or two months or three months, maybe longer, is now in the filter. Try to be sure that you contain the dust in the filter and protect yourself and your customer. Don't allow those trapped particles in to get back into the system. And you want to protect yourself. And specifically in this time, don't hesitate to use a mask. You could consider spraying that filter with a Clorox solution. And you could consider actually using a, a uh, portable UV light to decontaminate the filter. You actually move it out. Remember, a good idea, good practice is to plastic bag that filter as you take it out to dispose of it. And also don't hesitate or don't, don't forget, let's say, to clean the filter rack before you put the new filter in. No reason to contaminate a new filter with what you've just removed from the system. I'm gonna move on now from filters to purification systems. So I wanna cover several types of purification systems. And these are devices that are often advertised to kill viruses, bacteria, mold spores. And viruses are a little weird here because there's question about whether they're even alive. They need a host to, to uh, reproduce. They can't reproduce on their own. So they won't reproduce on the, the coil. They won't reproduce in the HVAC system as mold and bacteria will. So we're going to look at three methods are known, at least in the laboratory, are known to deactivate the DNA or the RNA in the case of viruses that will stop these pathogens from reproducing. Pathogens being the biologicals in the air that will make us sick. So what are the three main types? Or, and we'll look at types and brands of the equipment. And I'm gonna limit those to three types for this video. Ultraviolet lights. Ultraviolet lights have been known effective at killing both airborne and surface pathogens viruses, mold, bacteria, for many years. They've been used both in air and in water purification. They do this by passing a specific wavelength of ultraviolet light through the organisms, disrupting their ability to reproduce. There are two basic types, if you will, or goals for the UV light. One is to kill the surfaces. Now, these have been used in hospitals to kill bacteria and viruses on surfaces for years and in our industry killing the bacteria and, and mold on a surface happens to be the air conditioning coil uh, since 2005 equipment has been made with drain pans that are resistant to ultraviolet light so that should not be a concern anymore now our whole purpose here is to bathe that coil in ultraviolet light and keep the coil clean. Uh, to be effective, when we're talking about surfaces, to be effective, the light must be close enough to the coil to impact the pathogen. We're talking about approximately a foot. And that will deliver enough ultraviolet energy to, in, you know, to, to disrupt that life cycle. The second use is to kill pathogens in the airstream. Uh, this is a system that consists of more than one UV bulb in the airstream. And the problem with the airstream compared to the coil, you know, the coil is there, the light is there, they don't move. We have unlimited realistically amount of time in the surface disinfection. But in the case of the moving airstream, there's very little time that they, uh, biologicals that those pathogens have in contact with the light. So they're, they're definitely not as effective specifically on a single pass. And so we have to remember that, that, you know, by nature, our HVAC system is recirculating. So any of these uh, indoor air quality devices that we put in play have the ability to cover the air time and time again. Think about it. In, a typical three-ton system, 2,000 square foot house, moves the entire volume of air in the house through the duct system as many as 13 times an hour. Uh, each time, it reduces the level of contamination. So don't only look at any of these devices uh, on a one-time or a single pass. 
although that is an important uh, way to understand it. Going on from ultraviolet, let's look at photocatalytic oxidation. Uh, PCO, photocatalytic oxidation, is a it uses a strong ultraviolet light, and the, the brand that we've decided to carry is APCO X from Fresh Air Systems. Uh, they use UVC, same kind of uh, ultraviolet as the other ultraviolet lights, and that uh, ultraviolet radiation is used. It will directly kill pathogens, but as well as it's going to impact a catalyst. That's the photocatalytic part. Uh, titanium dioxide, and, and they use activated carbon to convert these pollutants, which would be the viruses, mold, spores, as well as volatile organic compounds, VOCs. And we're going to convert that, they were going to kill the, the pathogens, but we're going to convert the VOCs to carbon dioxide and water vapor. Uh, again, this is this is a much bigger subject than we'll ever cover in this video. But uh, as we look at the PCO, does it can kill COVID-19? Yes, just like UV will kill COVID-19. The question really becomes, will the, the virus ever make it into the HVAC system? Because all of our methods will only kill while it's in the system. and Will it uh, will it speed, which we, we have to be very careful about how we uh, promote these items specifically in, in as it relates to any virus, because we have to make sure since it's inside the HVAC system that we're able to bring those pathogens into the system to remove them. As we talk about volatile organic compounds, which is something that we have to look at going on past the, the COVID-19, VOCs are come from solvents, fuels, chemicals like formaldehyde that's often used in building materials. They're all detrimental to our health. And PCO is a, a known method to break down those chemicals. And we, it's a complex chemical reaction between the VOC and the uh, ultraviolet light and the titanium dioxide catalyst. And finally, purification treatments, we wanna take a quick look at ion generators. They're probably the newest thing in the uh, purification uh, toolbox, so to speak. Ion generators, we're looking at the I-Wave from New Calgon. They generate charged particles, charged ions, and those ions have the ability to change the chemical makeup of pathogens as well as uh, VOCs. Uh, ions can be called cold plasma. The I wave is considered a needle point uh, ion generator. And uh, they, they produce these particles entering into the airstream. And when they come in contact with the pathogens, they remove a hydrogen atom from the uh, from the pathogen and it disrupts their life cycle very similar to how the others will do that different method and then similar to the PCO the ions will also cause VOCs to start to break down so we break down these large volatile organic compounds into their simpler chemical forms such as water vapor and carbon dioxide where they're not harmful so we have the, the iWave from New Calgon in stock. If you need more information about any of these products, uh, give a call to your local APR uh, branch or your salesperson. Two more items we want to cover quickly. Ventilation. Uh, in older homes, ventilation wasn't even considered necessary. And then as construction started to become more uh, tight and we wanted to make sure that we didn't have drafty homes. We want to look, you know, as uh, how to control ventilation. So we've had people that have questioned this tightening of construction with of requiring ventilation. Why do we tighten the construction just so we can ventil then we add ventilation to the system? And the the real reason is 
If we tighten the construction, now we can control the ventilation. We know how much air we're moving in, and we only bring in as much air as is required to keep the house free of contaminants and to bring in enough oxygen so we can continue to breathe. Ventilation can be achieved by bringing in air into the home through the HVAC system directly. Now, we understand if we just bring it into the HVAC system, we have to treat that air, which means we have to reheat the air if it's cold outside, we want to cool the air if it's hot outside, and if we bring in uh, moisture, we may have to remove additional moisture from that air in the, in the uh, air conditioning mode. We also want to bring it into the HVAC system in a position the system where we can now filter it and treat it with the other devices that we've already discussed. We can also bring that air in through an ERV or an HRV. Then ERV, energy recovery ventilator, it removes the stale air from the house and it brings in fresh air and it does this through a heat exchanger. Now, the real difference between the ERV and the HRV is how they handle moisture, water vapor, humidity. The ERV allows humidity to cross through the heat exchanger, keeping that in the wintertime now, keeping that humidity in the home. Uh, in the heat recovery ventilator, it just moves the air through and wherever the humidity is in the wintertime, humidity is exhausted out with the stale air and the, the cold outdoor air comes in with no humidity being added. So HRV, uh, heat recovery, heat only, no humidity. Uh, again, you need help with sizing, understanding, please give us a call and we'll, we'll certainly help you through uh, sizing and uh, application of ventilation equipment. Finally, last subject, humidity. And as we get to humidity, especially when I first started putting this video together, I thought humidity was not even important to the COVID-19 discussion. But it turns out that keeping humidity at a high enough level can help to stop the spread of the virus. When someone coughs or sneezes, that's spreading the virus. If we can keep that virus in a humid environment, it stays heavier and has much better chance of falling down, hitting the floor or hitting surfaces where we are going to clean and remove it much harder if in a dry environment where that uh for the pathogen where the virus will remain airborne and much more likely to be to have someone breathe it in and have them get sick so passing the virus on so uh trying to keep that humidity level up in the the uh, 40 to 50 percent range and, and we have to be very careful with humidity in our colder climate as we get the humidity level up high, we start to get the possibilities of water vapor in cold spots, windows, uninsulated walls. So we have to be very careful with humidity. Again, if you need help understanding humid humidity and the application of humidifiers, give us a call. Let us help you with uh, your indoor air quality needs. You can contact any of our salespeople or our counter staff and if they need assistance, they will certainly contact me and we'll help you with all of your indoor air quality needs. Thanks for listening.